everybody, so bon night to a great mind. Welcome back to Umineko Chiro. <sighs> I've been missing recording this. But um, in the last episode, we are uh, going into a bit of a chapter format, I guess. And we're starting to see things through Yasu's personality. Or per pers perspective. That was the word I was looking for. Anyway, speaking of personalities... I, okay, I'm still trying to figure out what Yasu's, like the full name of Yasu is. But I'm, I'm still thinking of Sayo. Maybe Sayo was just the name that they got themselves later. But, um... So... What I'm thinking is... Is that... Considering the ages probably wouldn't match up if... The Shannon that we're seeing was the actual Shannon. Then she would be probably considerably older than George, I think. But, um... I'm thinking that this Shannon might actually just be another personality that resides within Sayo, a or Yasu, I guess. Uh, I mean, I want to try to pay attention to see if like any of the other servants kind of react to anything Shannon says, you know. But let's just see if that if that plays out. Anyway, <sighs> I love you, Echo. <laughs> Chapter 2, The First Friend Yasu Hello Anta chibi bouki dou shita no? Madowaku soji yo ni tsukatte na katta ke? Ah, the small broom is a small thin broom that looks like a large paintbrush. We use it to clear out the dust in small corners like window frames. It's one of the cleaning tools I was put in charge of. しかりしなさいよ。あんたに任せたでしょ。何やってんのよ、ドンクサイ。ほら、急いで探しておいで。奥様に見つかる前に急いで急いで。うん。どうした？ こっつ、物をなくす天才。だから安に物を持たすなといつも言っている。そいつはそそっかしいから、いつも物をなくす。うん。一生懸命やってるんだから、そんなこと言っちゃいけません。ほら、急いで探してらっしゃい。待ってる
あずき島という名でしたでももっと大昔かしのよび名はあくじき島でした島に近寄る船乗りを海の底に引きずり込んで魂を食らうと噂されておりまして<笑> Must have been the そんな恐ろしい悪霊がこの島にいるんでございますよ<笑><笑>それは熊沢の好み定番の階段新しい使用人がやってくるたびに聞かせるお約束の階段普段ならばくだらないと笑い捨てられるそれも後宮家の屋敷以外に何も存在せず嵐の夜には不気味なうなりを聞かせるこの寂しい六軒島では誰もが神妙に耳を傾けるのだったあの海岸の社は悪霊を封じ込めるためだったのね親方様も薄気味悪いオカルト趣味をお持ちだし Quite an island of mysteries, don't you think? お屋敷も薄気味悪くて何かが潜んでそう Quite literally the perfect setting <笑>スタビの修験者がようやく抑え込むのが精一杯かろうじて封じ込められてはいますが今も夜な夜な犠牲者を求めて夜の屋敷を徘徊しているのですよ。うわあ、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれは、あれよみがえらせる研究だって言ってたわその魔法の実験の生贄に子供たちを呼び寄せてるんじゃないかってやっぱあこわい親方様に一人で書斎に来いって言われたらどうしよう Probably scream stranger danger なんかね昔書斎に行ったまま帰ってこない子がいたらしいよきっと亡霊のベアトリーチェの新しい肉体にする実験の犠牲になったんだわうん<笑>そうですとベアトリーチェ様が肉体を求め亡霊となってさまよっておられるのです2階の貴賓室はベアトリーチェ様の住みかお部屋を掃除するときはくれぐれも。礼を失することはあってはなりませんよさもないと<笑>思春期の想像力たくましき少年少女たちにとって階段は恐ろしいながらも魅力的なおとぎ話であった一つの物語を共有し共感することで連帯感が生まれすると教官は義務となりそれを受け入れることが共同体に加わる通過儀礼のようになるずっと昔からそれは繰り返され受け継がれてきたのだええ私も六軒島でお勤めをするようになって熊沢さんや先輩方に聞かされました僕も聞かされたよ主に姉さんにね私も聞かされましたとも主に熊沢さんでしたうん臆病そうなシャノンはともかく男の子のカノンや大の大人の棒玉で階段を信じたのフリキンハイラウドスチェアリス。But yeah, I mean, hell, I probably would. 僕は別に信じてたわけでは。Sure、about that. 階段やジンクスなどはどこの職場にもあるものです。私がかつて勤めておりましたホテルにもいくつもそういう話がありましたともつまりバカバカしい話だと思って気にしなかった空気を読むってとこはあったかもしれないですね階段もジンクスもその職場のローカルルールです
それに新参者が背けば打ち解けることはできませんからね、うん、そういうこと魔女なんているものかバカバカしいなんて言うと姉さんと喧嘩になるからね That and you would probably incur the wrath of Maria. Uabe da kedemo awaseta hoga, nakudata shi. Mo, so na kimochi ja bachi ga atar yo. O kiga o shita hito mo itara shi in da kara. We keep bringing that bit up. <laughs> so na kanji de doko no shokuba demo, so yu hana shi wa aru mono desu. Shokuba no kaidan to. 会社創業者のとんでも武勇伝はどんなに突拍子がなくても受け入れて信じるそれが新しい職場に溶け込むということですともふーんみんな大人だね,人だね<笑> I went to each window around the chapel in the order I had cleaned them searching carefully in all the places I might have left it I'd been cleaning the windows with it, so it had probably been set down near one of those. When did I leave it behind, I wonder? Now that I think about it, I don't think I had it anymore when I reached the last window, so I must have completely forgotten to clean that window frame. Huh. Through the window, I could see the others leaving in groups. Shannon turned around and glanced up, looking worried. I don't want to be responsible for making everyone wait, so I'm actually glad they're leaving without me. Still, naive though it may have been, I wanted them to wait. Whoa. The sun's beginning to set, and the chapel's getting darker and darker. I don't want to hang around in a place like this all by myself. I'd better find the small room fast. No, that's not all. I also need to clean the window frames I forgot. Madam is strict. She'll probably check all of the windows carefully. If she does, I'll be the one that gets in trouble tomorrow. But really, where did I lose it? Why did I lose it? The darkness grew and grew. When it became dark enough that I would need a light before long, I began to panic. I dashed around and around the chapels, tears streaming down my face. As I stumbled about pathetically, I could feel the presence of a prankster witch giggling at me from under the door and up by the ceiling. The ghost of Beatrice, the master's mistress, wanders about in search of a body to this very day. As she gains the power of Rokinjima's evil spirits, her strength steadily grows, and she waits for the day of her resurrection. And For some reason, she's peeking out at me. And if I ever take my eyes off of something for a second, she snatches it away and hides it. This isn't the first time this has happened. Whenever I look away, keys, handkerchiefs, pencils, erasers, all of them vanish almost right away. Even though I was planning to use them later or just wanted to put them in their proper place, they disappear as soon as I turn around. It isn't someone hiding them as a prank. It's happened many times when I'm the only person around. Then that must have been the start of the witch personality. That, or it's actually the Shannon personality. Everyone always says I'm too careless and forgetful, and they laugh at me, get mad at me. I do try to be alert, but like some kind of bad joke, I lose things easily when I forget about them for just a short while. So sometimes I think, well, this eraser is just going to disappear sooner or later, and I stare at it. But at those times alone, it doesn't disappear. Nothing disappears when I'm alert. But as soon as I think I'm safe and the tension relaxes just a bit, then something else will disappear. Why is it always me? <laughs> yeah, I hear it. I can hear that witch laughing at me as I lamely run around in circles. <laughs> Listening to that voiceless laugh, I finally slam my hands against the wall, crying tears of frustration. Please just stop it! Why do you always hide my things and get me in trouble? And the witch answered. <laughs> I couldn't bear it. 
Even though I knew what she said was true, hearing it said directly was incredibly annoying. I understand. That small broom probably is somewhere in this chapel. No, that's not quite it. Right until I came to this window here, I'm sure it was right by this window frame. That's right, I'm sure I put it by this window. But the prankster witch Beatrice used her magic, and just before I reached this spot, she instantly teleported the small broom to the next window over. The instant I approached that window, a hole appeared beneath the small broom, swallowing it up. Wait. A small hole? Gop? And it came out by the next window after that. It landed right inside it, as though it had been there the whole time. And this happened over and over again. As I ran up to that window, the small broom fell into a magic hole and went to the next window. And when I went to that window, it went to the next window. And I realized that she was just making fun of me. So no matter how much I searched, it would be useless. But if I stop searching, it'll just be sitting there by one window or another. So this isn't a search. It's a test of endurance. I kept chasing after the small broom, and Beatrice kept making it just escape to the next window over, trying to make me give up. This is an eternal chase, that'll only end when one of us gives up. So I kept going around and around, even to windows that I knew I'd already searched. If it's not by this one, then the next one, and the next one. And the witch kept moving the small broom to the next window, and the next one. Just give it a rest! How long are you going to make fun of me? This isn't the only time you always do this! The shrill, voiceless laugh of the formless witch continued to mock my sobbing. The witch was right beside me, laughing at me. As I dashed around the chapel, she's following along with me, taunting me. Then, she must be there. She's right behind me, just over my shoulder, still cackling away. I know that turning around won't help since she has no form. I can try to look, but I mustn't look at them with my eyes. Once my eyes tell me there's nothing there, I won't be able to see anymore. I learned that from the director of the Fukuin House. You mustn't try to see with your eyes. You must see with the eyes of your heart. The whole world is filled with God's love. In the many blessings of everyday life, one can see God and angels of the Holy Ghost. I try to look at them with your eyes. You cannot see them, so you won't be able to see them. So you won't be able to feel them or understand them. With the eyes of the heart, you will quietly understand. You don't look at them. You see and draw them with your heart. In this way, I learned how to recognize beings not of this world, the Fuquin House. It doesn't just mean being able to see God. This power lets one see all of those not of this world. Please, stop it now! Stop this prank! I'm clumsy, bad at my job, and I do put things down and forget about them a lot. But I know which things were my fault, and which things were because of your pranks. これはこれは姿の際らは近くするだけでなく、わらわのささやかな遊びまで無理解すると思ったよ。お前は面白い存在ではないか。Yes。I'm <笑> usually called Yasu when one of the older servants is laughing behind my back at some mistake I've made. So when I hear that name, it feels bad. She called me, not by the blessed name given to me by the Fukuin House, but by that unblessed name. Upsetting the heart is a classic move for evil beings to make. By doing that, they make it so that their presence isn't noticed. To beings like witches, being understood is like shoving them out into the light of day. It won't work. In the Fukuin House, I learned how to perceive those not of this world. So I already understand you. <laughs> It won't work. I've now understood and perceived you. No matter how many unpleasant things you say, you'll just expose the ugliness of your heart. Without turning around, I slowly let my range of vision fill the entire chapel. It was as though the viewpoint of my soul was floating out from the shell of my head. See, inch by inch, my range, of, my range of vision is floating out of my head and drifting upwards. 
As I looked down at myself, standing there with head hanging and eyes tightly shut, the eyes of my heart, very slowly, rose up to the ceiling of the chapel. And when I looked down from there, I saw myself standing at the center of the chapel and the witch standing behind me. Apparently the witch realized that I could see her. Called it! She turned around and raised her eyes to look at the eyes of my heart floating by the ceiling. At last, I could see the witch Beatrice with the eyes of my heart. Wait. The demonic lips twisted in, in it, twisting, twisted in an ugly curve. It was clearly a challenging, repulsive demon smile. She wore a blood-red dress and hat. The design was completely different from anything humans wore. Her hair was blonde. It had countless beautiful curls like a princess from a picture book. But there was no trace of cuteness about her. <laughs> you sad witch who can only be seen by no one, heard by no one. Have you been pulling these pranks all the time just to catch the attention of humans? If so, then I've just saved you, because I understand you and have perceived you. It's getting dark. I don't have time to play with you anymore. Please give it back. My cleaning tool. But as soon as I get close, you'll move it to the next window over. <laughs> The witch snapped her fingers and various things so the chapel were sucked into a black pitfall beneath them, disappearing. No, they didn't disappear. The instant they vanished into the dark holes, other dark holes appeared in completely different parts of the chapel and the banished objects fell out of those. Chairs, musical scores, clocks, and vases started appearing and disappearing all across the room. It made it feel as though countless tools were flying about the chapel. I wonder where the witch draws the line between pranks and magic. When she snapped her fingers again, all the loud flying objects returned to their original spots. And silence fell. Sonata. <laughs> the Fu Queen director told me not to try and see evil beings. If you see them, they will possess you. Now that I understood this witch, a bond had been formed between us. Huh. Oh, so Gob is a personality too, then. I will talk to you from time to time. So will you stop pulling pranks like this? <笑>まあよい。今日はこれで十分楽しんだ。日が陰り、月が満ちてきた。わらわもそなたの前にいつまでも姿を現すのは疲れる。今日はこれにて、ほうき一本で、そなたとたっぷり遊べた。<笑><
One, two. Please give it back. If I said I did, would you give it back to me? If you give it back, I'll acknowledge you as a friend. What else do you want? 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 I mean, yeah. Demons aren't very charitable. They always need something in exchange. <laughs> Understood. Then I'll leave the small broom with you. Please give it back when you decide to become my friend. When the witch snapped her fingers, the broom for which I had searched for so long fell out of a hole in the air, landing between the fingers she had just snapped. If you are my friend, that is. Not necessarily, no. <laughs> Bye, Gop. <laughs> hmm. The witch faded away. As she did, the eyes of my heart shut themselves. When I returned to my body, I felt suddenly tired and let out the breath I'd been holding. Of course, when I turned around, there was no one to be seen. I couldn't feel the witch's presence anywhere anymore. It had gotten very dark by this time. I decided to leave the chapel. There's no point searching for the small broom any longer. Not until the witch decides to give it back. I went out of the chapel. The chapel key had been left in the lock. I used it to lock the door. What am I going to do about the small broom? There's nothing I can do. I can't even blame the witch. I must acknowledge that I'm responsible for giving the witch a chance. <laughs> when I happened to glance downwards, I saw a small broom lying there by my feet. It was the broom I had been searching for all this time. D don't tell me that it'll be swallowed up by a dark hole the instant I bend over to pick it up. No. This is... A sign from the witch. A sign that she acknowledges me as a friend. I picked it up. Oh, I am one yet many. Good point. But that was God. しかし
Christ, that was short. 30 minutes exact. Huh. Oh well. え、そういうこともなくなって立派になりましたし。うん。そのあたり前ができるようになるのが成長というものですとも。皆さんだって何事も最初から要領が良かったわけではないでしょ。後ろ宮家の推薦されないの。みんな、ちょっと厳しすぎると思います。その厳しい中から選ばれたのが私たちでしょ。私たちに甘やかす義理はないわ。つくづく。安ってなんであんな洞窟祭に選ばれたの?さっぱりだわ。うん。福音の家
like the ones the evil spirits of Rokinjima fear. So, <笑>これで雲の糸のようでしょ。もういたずらができないというわけですよ。a large vehicle just freaking drove by the house. What the shit? That does make sense. He really does look like a spider web when pulled tight. Since Kumasawa-san says so, it must have some pretty strong evil repelling power. I can just ask her to make several of these kite strings for me, and then I can tie them to everything that I don't want to lose. But clearly that won't be very practical. I'd have strings all over me. What about things I can't keep tied to me? Like pencils and erasers. So you took you a bit no imagining Ari Masio. So they were empty and ya kissing on the sunny. Oh, to you, it's good to get all my night. This you make a house. You mean build a roof in the bed and stuff? Oh, to you, it's good. No, they were not. Oh, to you, keep me down. You know, this you that ever. この<笑> Poor thing. I need to get Mr. Knife a home. Hojo-san returned the knife to the knife holder under the sink. Even though she had done something so ordinary, I felt slightly moved, as though the lost little knife had finished his adventure and finally returned home. Once he slid into the spot he was supposed to be in, all the knives would be together and could have a party. Then Kumasawa-san said we should give them their privacy and shut the door. Take them home right away. So ですよ。寂しがり屋だからすぐに魔女についていってしまう。行けないこたちなんですよ。だからすぐにお家に返してあげないと。ほら、さっきタコ糸で縛ったままそこに置きっぱなしのマスターキーさんも。Lonely. The voice of the lonely master key finally reached my ears. I hurried to pick it up, took the other end of the string, and tied it to my pocket bottom. Then put the key in my pocket. Hora, tadaimatte. すぐお家へ返してあげましょうね。こういうお友達を少しずつ増やしていけば、ベアトリーチェ様もだんだんいたずらはできなくなりますよ。Clink. When bright time was over and I stood up to see what I should help with next, I felt a tug and the key ring with the master key fell to the floor. Once again, I had left the master key on the side of the sofa and forgotten it was there. The instant I stood up, the string pulled on it and it fell to the floor. Without Kumasawa-san's spiderweb charm, I would probably have left that master key lying here again. The master key left all alone would have had been led away by the witch and disappeared. Whew, that was close. And once again, I heard the master key who had almost been who had almost been left alone cry and tell me what, that I wanted to go home. I'm sorry. Come on, let's go home. Let's go back home to my pocket. Uh, oh god, I don't. I, I can't even do a voice for this. Yeah, I'm home. 
Thank goodness. I almost got pranked by the witch again. Nanto, ma, ito de musubu to wa omoshiroi mane o. All of a sudden, I heard a wild, shocked voice from over my shoulder. It was a voiceless voice. A witch's voice. The kind you can't hear unless you try. Beatrice? It's a spider web charm that Kumasawa-san showed me. Apparently, it works very well. Um, Almost definitely not. Uh, that's a scary example. My finger hurts just thinking about it. No shit. しかし、良かったではないか。また鍵をなくしたと夏日に怒られずに済んだぞ。笑わのおかげだな。感謝せよ。<笑> わらわがはらだたしかったからこそまじないを覚えたのであろうそのまじないでそなたは鍵をまたしても置き忘れるというっかりをこうして防げたではないかうんオッケー okay. added thought here these personalities exist to better her i guess つまり that's the thought that came across whenever I read that. <laughs> uh, I really don't like it, but she does have a point. Because of all the trouble Beatrice caused me, I told Kumasawa-san and learned the charm from her. Even without the witch's pranking, if I didn't have the charm, I would have gone to my next job and left the master key here. If that happened, then surely I wouldn't have been able to find the key, and it would have been a big mess. こういうのを一罰百回という。わらわは友人としてそなたのミスを過剰にいたずらしておもいしらせることで、こうしてそなたを立派に教育したというわけなのだ。I get the feeling that Kumasawa-san's the one I should be thinking, not you. やれやれ、魔女とはつくづく。<laughs> anyway, I win this time. Okay, I need to get back to work now. よかろうとも、我がともよ。今回は勝ちを許そうぞ。されど、わらわは諦めが悪い。この負けを取り返すべく、以後さらにますますにそなたのミスを探そうと伺い続けるであろうぞ。心せよ。そそっかしそなたが置き忘れる小道具などいくらでもある。それらすべてに高い糸を縛るわけにもいくまい。The <笑> spiderweb charm isn't the only one I have. I also learned the take them home charm. I won't let you have your way anymore. <笑>どの程度そなたがやれるものか拝見させそれにしてなんとも晴れやかな笑顔を見せよって。魔女が来るのは笑う角でなく泣き面が不さわしいもう休み時間は終わっているぞせいぜい今日も先輩たちの足を引かぬように仕事に精を出すがよかろう。Sure, today is Sunday and the weather is wonderful. I'd better do my best. せいぜい励め。そうそう。レイネの機嫌が朝から悪い。サノン。is that a misspelling of Shannon? Or maybe it really is Sanon. Wait a minute. Sa, every name ends with known. Wait a minute. Essay, what other character among the servants do I know that starts with an essay? Is that supposed to be Satan's? Fortune for the day is water hazard. Okay. そなたのこと。きっと我が期待を裏切らず、バケツをひっくり返して叱られてくれることを心待ちにしている。Thank <笑> you, Beatrice. Back when I still couldn't see her. 
I simply hated this prank-loving witch. But now that I could talk with her, it felt as though she wasn't all bad. Of course, there was no need for me to be grateful to her. The witch Beatrice despises boredom and mocks the misfortune of others instead of eating food. Humans and witches are different. Incompatible beings. And yet, it felt as though we could become friends. Of course, she's still a witch. I mustn't get careless. And yet, not being careless is a good thing. Thanks to the tricks and charms I used to keep her at bay, I'm able to concentrate. That could hardly be a bad thing. Those things will be useful for my job and my life, even without the witch's pranks. I see. So this witch called Beatrice really is like a demon. Apparently it's possible to build up a friendship through verbal abuse. Hmm. <laughs> ですね、あの子は本当にリチになこだから私の教えたおまじないをしっかり守っているようでしたとも。いちいちたこいとで縛って、あるいはいちいちお家へ帰るって。ええ、時折口に出してやってました。まるでお道具とおままごとをしてる
All the servants swung around to look at me, the usual offender. そんな決めつけはいけませんよ。私はもちろん持ってるわよ。こんな大事なものを落とすわけがない。みんなは持ってます。持ってる。ほら、安。あんたじゃない。この間奥様にきつく縛られたのにまだ分かってないの。Something tells me that it was you, Lucifer. これだからあんたは。いつも Genji-sama's Genji face was as expressionless as ever. However, those were unmistakable words of praise. <laughs> yes, that's right. この瞬間の誇らしげな体験は我の幼少の記憶に忘れがたい一ページを刻むこととなるされば源氏が見つけたる鍵は誰のもの。Yeah, I'm actually curious about that. Who's key? <laughs> was it really Lucifer? <laughs> it was. There was only one servant who hadn't raised their key. As she muttered, it has to be Yasu's key, not mine, and fished in her pocket, her face went pale. Damn. <laughs> The older servant turned red and hung her head. Behind her, though no one else could see it, was the witch. <笑><笑>我が <laughs> Please don't prank people other than me. え、何か言った Good job, Yasu. Homerarito, まず余裕が生まれる。それまで本当にこれで正しいのかと怯えながらしていた仕事が自信を持って成せるようになるのだ。確かに気楽になれば余裕も生まれるね。余裕が生まれるとどうなるのかしら。日々を楽しめるようにな
そういえばゴーダはよく仕事の合間にクロスワードパズルをしているね。Eh, I ジュニアジャンボ余った材料で勝手に創作料理を作ったりもしてるわ。適度に遊び、気分をリフレッシュさせるのは効率上も悪いことではなかろう。創作料理も遊び心と仕事の融合と言える。あの源氏とって誰も見ているところでは程よくサボっているはずだぞ。テレビを見たり、主の酒をくすねたり、really? 小難しい本を読んでいたりしているわ。Okay, that sounds more likely. あのゲージが<笑><笑>要はうまく仕事の合間を縫って、要領よく遊ぶということだ。過ぎれば気の緩みとも言われよう。しかし、仕事と遊びのメリハリがつけられるようになって初めて人は一人前になるのだつまるところ仕事だけで精一杯なうちは半人前ということよじゃああの子は仕事の合間に遊ぶということを覚えたってことあの生真面目な子がサボりを覚えるなんてちょっと考えづらいね交流を覚えた親切にしてくれるクマサーとの仲を深め本の貸し借りとその感想を語り合う関係を得た、huh, really? 我にも学校にて友人はいたが仕事の都合もあり友情を深め合うには至ってなかった気取らぬジェシカも親しくしてはくれたが夏日の幻名もあり一緒に遊ぶこともできなかったそんな我にとっていつも母のように優しくしてくれる熊沢は最も親しい存在であった孫ほども離れた二人のこと駆け回って遊ぶわけではない、right. 熊沢の趣味に興味を持ったのだ熊沢の趣味って何かしら本だ意外かもしれぬがあの熊沢なかなかに推理小説を好んでおった。ほう。どんな本か関心を持つうちに、自分も読んでみることに。その通りよ。推理小説は読みながらに語らうのもなかなかに楽しい。すでに答えを知る熊沢にしても、若き知性がどのような推理を見せるのか。聞くのはさぞや楽しかったに違いあるまい。無論いきなり熊沢の読む難解なものから入りはしなかった。Well, I mean, probably not. まずはおすすめを聞き、学校の図書室から探してきて読んだ。使用人室にも持ち込み、休憩の合間などに少しずつ読み進めた。そして、新しい推理が浮かぶたびにそれを熊沢に話し、すでに答えを知っている熊沢はニヤニヤと笑いながら、我の推理に相づちを打つそれが我にとっての楽しい時間だった、うん、お風呂行かないの浴場の時間終わっちゃうよ Yeah, just a bit more Another one of the Indian figures just disappeared <笑>すっかりミステリー好きになっちゃって<笑>あんまり熱中して読んでるとまた興奮して寝つけなくなっちゃうよ。According to Kumasawa-san, the culprit has already appeared, but I don't have a clue who it is. それ、どんなお話 ?It's by Agatha Christie. And then there were none. Ah! It's really interesting. Almost like it's a crime happening on Rokunjima. それ、すごく有名な推理小説だよね。最後。犯人がメッセージボトルで真相を告白するまで完全犯罪だったんだっけすごいよねしシュシュ I'm enjoying myself so don't spoil me Go take a bath now I'll go by myself later はいはいじゃあ後でねお風呂忘れちゃダメよ Shannon picked up a change of clothes and smiled amusedly as she left the room I probably won't be able to read the whole thing tonight 
Even though I know that, I just keep turning the pages unable to find a good place to stop. My new joy. The mystery genre. The mental game of thinking and theorizing. And also talking about it with Kumasawa-san. All that left me enraptured. Hey, Gop. We can't have that. I better find a place to stop soon. ふふふ。我らは生まれた太古の時代には推理小説なる娯楽はなかった。そなたの片腰に読ませてもらっているが、なかなか面白い読み物であるな。Beto, who do you think is the culprit? Yeah. Who is U.N. Owen, I wonder? There were only ten people on this island. And un... Oh, I get it. Unknown. Doesn't exist. No, that's not right. He or she is on the island. They're one of the ten people. I just don't know who. That's just how it is. Since if you doubt that, you're stuck. Or it's just one of the assumptions of the mystery genre. Or... Hmm... シマのアルジであろう隠し部屋に潜んでおるのかもしれんあるいはわらわと通る千年を経た魔女かもしれぬぞいやいやたかだか十人を殺すのにこの手までは千年は経ておらぬなこの魔女せいぜい四百九十
that's a fun way to look at it. A fight between me and the witch. Yeah, I really like thinking of it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one theory. You want to play with me, don't you? I've been reading books so much you've gotten lonely. So tomo you. Incidentally, the game Beato and I played with, and then there were none, ended with my defeat. In the end, I wasn't able to build a satisfying theory, and I had to learn the truth from, one, from the message bottle. Luckily, it did manage to drift into human hands. If it had sunk to the bottom of the ocean, as Beato had suggested, I would have no way of knowing the truth. In other words, I was forced to acknowledge you and Owen as a witch. Mystery. I once thought it was just a genre for novels. To think that it can be that it can be so they, ah! to think that it can so easily become a fight between witches and humans, truth and fantasy. I was instantly enraptured by this new game. As the months passed by, I read through all of the mystery novels in the school library, and started to read mystery novels for adults. I discussed them with Kumasawa. I discussed them with Shannon. I played my game of theory chess, the fight between witches and the truth. Those days were so much fun. Oh, I am one yet many. Here's to the fun game of the mind that enraptured me. Hmm. Dai Yonso, Ataraski Hibi. Okay, time-wise, we're gonna go even further, actually, so get ready for a super long episode. The months and years slid by. In my new, more colorful life, I smiled at the spring sunshine peeking through the trees, gazed up at the calm of summer clouds, enjoyed the piles of fallen leaves in autumn, and played in the winter snow the few times it did fall. As these days passed one after another, there was a considerable change to my environment. The servants coming from the Fukuin house had switched, there weren't specific grades like in schools, so there was no rule saying how long a servant could work before quitting. Each servant made their own decision about when they would graduate from Rokinjima. Some of those who couldn't stand the environment would quit in as little as three days. After all, life on Rokinjima was strict. It was also strict in the Fukuin house, of course, but there were a lot of Rokinjima-only rules. And Natsuhi, the one who supervised servants, was also very authoritarian. It was probably easy to feel constrained. That constrained feeling and the money sat on opposite sides of the scale that they had used to decide the time of their graduation. And sometimes, someone from the Yoshidemiya family would use their influence to secure someone a new job, encouraging them to spread their wings and start a new life. The cycle usually lasted two or three years. No one decided this, but it was one of the goals most servants shot for, an unspoken rule. However, I was an exception to that rule. I continued to go to school in Nijima while still living as a servant. That year, all the Fukuin house servants quit at once. It wasn't at all rare for friends to quit at the same time as each other. All of my fellow servants from the Fukuin house graduated from the island at once, leaving only me behind. Of course, I wasn't on particularly good terms with them. On the contrary, it was annoying to be treated like a kid and called Yasu all the time. Even though some new servants had come after me, the older ones had already gotten them believing that Yasu loses things all the time. So it wasn't really any more pleasant to have new comrades. Those unpleasant older servants, as well as the ones who started at the same time or after I did, all quit at once. The Ushidomiya family had no quarrel with those who left. Adult servants were easier to handle in the first place. The Fukuin house servants were only accepted so that they could be trained. So all of the other servants left and no one tried to stop them. <laughs> Sure, Lucifer. Nah. I don't lose things anymore. Heh. Jane. Oksama no yukoto, yoko chikuna yo. 
後から来る仲間に迷惑かけるんじゃないわよいまだに謎よねどうしてヤスはここに推薦されたのそれを言ったらいまだに奥様がヤスの勤務を認めてる方が意外だわ逃げ出さない分だけ根性があるってもんだしっかりなヤス Thank you, Belphegor. I, I hate being called Yasu. At the very end, I finally said the one thing I'd always wanted to say to them. However, they basically ignored me and just picked up their things and left. I wouldn't even want to. もう忘れちゃおうもうお互い何の関わりもないだから心にとどめる必要もない Yeah, you're right I felt just a bit disappointed I never got a chance to prove to them that I could take care of myself 人は最初の印象をいつまでも引きずる生き物だからねだから仕方がないあなたがどんなに素晴らしい人間に成長しても彼女らはきっといつまでもヤスと呼び続けてあなたをバカにしたと思うものそんな人たちに認めさせようと思うなんて全然意味のないことなんだよ Yes Yeah You're right Shannon I'll completely forget about those people それがいいよあなたには私や熊沢さんなどの素敵な友達がいるじゃないそして新しい使用人の人たちの前では今度は一人前の姿を見せてあげればいい The more I learn, the more I'm pretty convinced that you're just a personality Shannon was exactly right Ever since that day when I held the key with the spiderweb charm up high I'd regained my confidence and pride I am now the most experienced Fukuin's servant The new servants who come will still probably be older than me But I need to teach them the ropes as the more experienced servant Genji sama even told me to guide the newer servants. Okay. I'll give it my all. Yeah. Oh my god. Asune and Berune. The newly arrived servants looked a bit superficial. When I first joined the Ushidomiya family, I was incredibly nervous. However, I couldn't see any trace of that nervousness on these girls. The board of directors? Watching their everyday conduct? I hope in a very not creepy way, because if it was a creepy way, then you might want to call the police. Probably. Really? それが使用人としての日々の中で研磨されやがては後宮家の使用人の名に恥じない立派な姿に成長していくのだとはいえそれを促すのは先輩使用人たちの役目今や我だけが子さんである以上彼女らを立派に導く責務があるのだ新しく来た子たちはどんな感じだったもちろんエリートね金鉱法制な奥様や源氏様の前ではそうだったと思いますでも目上の方がいらっしゃらない時はそのちょっと不真面目だったみたいでレイジーアスネさんお道具は使うたびにちゃんと台車に戻してくださいはーいごめんなさい Okay then 
I also have to be alert as a more experienced servant. And, Brune-san, you shouldn't set your key down in a place like that. You'll lose it. When I first arrived here, the older servants would often tell me off just as I had done now. They would probably have been mean or and obnoxious about it. I hated that, so I tried to be more gentle when admonishing them, but they wouldn't take me seriously. L listen up. You know there's a witch living on the mansion, don't you? That's right. It's gotten me into trouble many times. Okay. They pointed out Shannon. If they say Yasu next, then I only have one possible rebuttal theory, but until they refer to the character as Yasu, or some other name, then, um, we shall see. Uh-oh. Oh. マジョ Hmm, Asune and Berune were are clearly opposing. Or they seem to be opposite of each other in terms of their thoughts. Hmm. Well they said Yasu here, but not out in the Flashback. I'm quite curious. I'm あんな気弱な子がそこまでえげつないことするかなってずっと思ってた。どんなことがあったか話して。鍵束がなくなった時に私が見てない隙に奴がひょいってどこかに隠したんだろうと思えた。でも鍵束から一つの鍵だけが消
キュイって鍵をそれだけ外してロッカーにしまったの忘れてたんじゃないの鍵束からなんでわざわざその鍵だけを外すわけねカスネ鍵束の鍵外したりあるいは戻したりしたことある、uh, yeah, it's pretty difficult pulling a freaking key off of a key ring. 私も試してみたあれすごく硬いわざわざやらないやる意味ないし私無遊病自分でやったことの記憶さえないっての私バカだけどそこまでバカじゃない I mean, <laughs> kind of voiced what I usually say to people. I know how to solve this one. Okay, before I move any further, I know how to solve this one. Switching the master keys. So, here's how it probably went down. Which personality takes over already has their master key thing set up perfectly. And they basically took her master key, placing, replacing theirs, and you get what I'm saying. They basically just switched master keys, but hers had been prepared where it was missing one key. And then around the... And then they had taken the time to go ahead and just slip the actual... That other person's key into her locker. Or... Or, let's think of this... Think of it like this. The key was already placed inside of her locker. And they just switched out the keys perfectly whenever they were in that room so as not to make much clattery noise. That might explain it. That's what I'm thinking. So, did they so do what they could be about to say? Say, Josh, you also start up more than that. That had to have been the perfect time.
Ah, uh, but there was a chance, for you see, I have solved the mystery of this magic. Or probably I'm not, and I'm just talking on my ass, and everybody's kind of laughing at me like, You're an idiot! そんなおかしなことがおかげ。そう。物がなくなるとか単純にそれだけじゃないことがその後も他にも何度も何度もさすがに薄気味悪くなって物とかその辺に置かないように気をつけたけど。そう最初こそ癒す舐めんなって思
しっかりするようになったじゃんそしたら物がなくなるとかの騒ぎなくなったじゃん Let me guess, she started using the tricks that Kumasawa taught、uh, Yasu, Sayo. Son carelessly tossed her key ring on the bed again, humming as she started to clean. No matter how much I warn her, she doesn't change her ways. She's always making fun of me and calling me Yasu, so she won't listen to what I tell her. Why won't you listen to what I say? You mustn't leave things lying carelessly about. If you lower your guard, the witch will prank you. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, please! Th that's Burune san's key! Keep your pranking to me alone! Let the others be! Sonata was a little bit of 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 a Are you planning to steal Bruni san's key? Please don't do it! She'll think I hit it again! Uh -oh. <laughs> a shiver ran up my whole body like an electric shock. From that moment onwards, I couldn't move any part of my body by my own will. Like a moment of shock after a blackout. I could do nothing but accept the fact that I had lost control over my body. All the cells through my body felt tingly. It felt as though my body had been transformed into someone else's. I realized that the witch Beatrice was using my body as a vessel to revive for a short period of time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I didn't 
What are you trying to do? Please don't do anything mean. This time, everything was backwards. My words were spoken inside my heart, and the witch's voice was coming out of my mouth. Everything went completely white and my mind stopped. Once again, that tingling sensation slid up my body. I could feel it all gather in the fingers of both of my hands and come out of the tips of my fingers. It was an incomprehensible, indescribable, unknown sensation. My head went blank and I couldn't think at all. I could do nothing but abandon my soul to the sensation. I finally understood. This is what it's like to use magic. My finger was moved like a puppet's and danced around as though I was conducting magic. I never knew that having my body move without my control could be so exciting. When Beato lifted my finger as if a string was attached to it, the key ring lying on the bed stood on it. Verone-san didn't notice. Neither did Asune-san. They were fully occupied by their happy chat as they cleaned the room. I doubt that either of them would have dreamed that a witch was right behind them, readying herself to use magic. They probably couldn't even imagine the key ring doing a little dance right behind their back. It was like an anime fairy tale I'd seen once as a kid. The happy way the keys danced and spun, or spun made it look as though they had a will of their own. I could feel the fun of making those keys dance with my fingers, Washel. Yes, this is pleasure. As I powerfully watched the witch control, I couldn't help but surrender myself to this new joy called magic. <laughs> Beto controlled my fingers controlling the magic, and thereby controlling the keys. The key ring slumped down on the bed, and then just the mansion's master key stood on end. この鍵をどうしてやろうかとの消し去るだけでは<笑> <laughs> when Beto snapped her fingers, the key burst and became a gold butterfly. A gold butterfly? I see. It's gold because she's the golden witch who gave the master all of his gold. And butterflies are scared of spider things. So it's a gold butterfly. The minions, of the, the minions of the witch Beatrice are gold butterflies. After flitting into the air, it burst into a shower of gold sparks and disappeared. Then the vanished key went to Brunesan's locker. Though it was far away, in a changing room locker, I could tell exactly how it had happened. It wasn't by sight or by touch. It was by some other sense inside my heart, which couldn't be explained by the five senses. A completely new sensation that I had never felt before. It was the completely alien concept called magic. A completely unknown pleasure that left me in trance. It felt as though I had been spinning through space until gravity suddenly came back and threw me to the ground. Like when you're having a great dream, but you wake up suddenly. 
and all you remember about the dream was that it was fun, that sort of lonely feeling. Though Beato had been borrowing my body, it was my own body that used magic. I could still feel that sensation in my hands. The key ring over there had danced along with the movement of my fingers. No, that's not quite it. The key ring and my fingers had danced together. That fun, that excitement, still tingled slightly in my hands. <laughs> Saying this, Bruna-san suddenly turned around and picked up the key ring she had thrown down on the bed. She must have realized that I was staring at it. With a grin, she put the key back into her pocket. However, she still hadn't noticed. She probably couldn't even imagine that just a single key had vanished while her back was turned for a second. It's not easy for a human to do things like that. But with magic, with just a little dance of the keys and a butterfly popping, it had disappeared. Hey! Y yes, that's good. Then let's go on to the next room. Ah, Berenice-san, could you lock up this room for me? Hi. Did Berenice-san's key really disappear by magic? Was that fun magic daydream I had? I was so scared of that being true that I tested it. What, what's wrong? I could finally feel that tingling sensation run across my fingers again. That night, as I gazed at the ceiling from the bed in my dorm room, I looked at my hands. I couldn't sleep. The excitement from the time those keys danced was still there on my fingers. Is this a Beatrice? How we itches, witches, always feel. Witches, witches! What the fuck is wrong with me, mate? I have a friend who's a witch called Beatrice. She always used to pull pranks on me with her strange magic. Because I saw this all the time, I thought I knew what magic was. But today, she had possessed my body and used magic with it. The sensation of magic that I finally felt at that time still held my heart entranced. It was a completely unknown pleasure. Because, by moving my fingertips, I could make the key dance as I wished. It was a strange, strange miracle of magic, something humans could not do. I still couldn't let go of that excitement. Shannon, are you awake? Nani? Shannon was still awake. Shannon is always early to bed, early to rise. By getting to bed early, all her weirdness disappears by the next day. She lives a model life, one that all servants should respect and admire. If I want to become a loved, respected servant like Shannon, I'll need to act that way too. However, I wasn't confident that I could do that anymore. I guess I can't become like you after all. You were my ideal, always. Mm. Everyone in the Fukuin house loves you and is kind to you. Since you always played with me, you're the only friend I've ever had. And you're also a wonderful servant who can carry out any task in the Ushidomi of Mansion, both flawlessly and gracefully. You were the target I longed to reach. That's what you were to me. Mm. みんなどんどんあなたを認めてくれているよ。だから一緒に素敵な使用人を目指そうよ。私使用人やめる。Huh? Eh? Holy shit, she actually talked this time. 
チオニーより魔女の方が面白そうおおま魔女って何の話みんなに愛されて頼りにされる使用人ってうん今ももちろん憧れるけどでも今の私には魔女の方が憧れるのそれはえっとえチャネルは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、これは、私たちは、後宮家の使用人に推薦されたことを知らされた時よりもずっとずっと上知らなかった世界を初めて知ったようなまるで暗闇の世界だけに住んでて世界を全て知っているようなつもりになっていた私が初めて光を知って世界を目にするようなそんな喜び At that time, Beato had only used my fingertips, fingers, made a key ring dance, and turned a key into a butterfly before hiding it in a locker. But I had understood it with my body. If I had moved my fingers a different way, the, key, the ring would have, could have flown into the air instead of just dance. But I could have turned it into a scurrying lizard instead of a butterfly. I could have done anything! True, Beatrice's magical power was still weak. It had all happened in the little world behind the book backs of the servants filled with the anti magic toxin. However, inside that tiny, short lived world, I could do anything at all. Beato just happened to settle on making them dance and turning the key into a butterfly. But if she wanted to, she could have done anything else. The endless sensation of that free, unrestricted power. I could still feel it in my fingertips. Could it be that, along with that sensation, a fragment of that magical power might also remain? I can tell. It's still there. There's still just a bit of it there, along with that sensation. I can do it. I can still do it. <gasps> a single spot of golden light suddenly lit up in this dark room. It was right behind my cla- it was right between my clasped hands. When I slowly opened them, I could see a single dot that sparkled gold. <laughs> Shannon didn't know what that light meant. How could light appear from the palm of my hands? And yet, even with this miracle right in front of her, she couldn't understand what it was. She just sat there with her mouth open in disbelief. However, to me, this was the, just the return of that bit of sensation in my fingertips. The golden dot. Spread out and became a small gold butterfly. It flapped its wings and scattered gold sparks about like a, like a cartoon fairy. To Shannon, it probably looked as, just as though a gold butterfly was flapping its wings. Of course, that alone was a miracle that she could hardly grasp. But to me, it was like a remote control plane in the shape of a butterfly. I could control that gold butterfly however I wanted, not clumsily with threads. I could make it flap, dance, play through the air as I wished. I was taking a walk through the air as that little butterfly. The golden glint of it pierced the darkness of the small room as it danced about freely. It was an entrancing pleasure. However, that sensation in my fingers began to weaken. I could tell that the few magic butterfly scales left in my fingers were going away. Finally, the gold butterfly flashed and turned to dust like a firework run out of juice, falling down and disappearing without a trace. I'm 
もっともっと自由自在に何でもできるもう私はこの楽しさを覚えてしまったのもう人間には戻りたくない使用人なんて退屈なのだから魔女になるよ<笑>ま魔女になるってま待ってもう決めたのシャノン今日まで楽しかったこの部屋をあげるねあなた一人で使ってじゃあねさようならはあま待って Wait, what the? Uh. As Shannon called out repeatedly for me to wait, a massive planetarium swallowed me up. In the sea of the pitch black starry sky, I was alone. I. We. Are alone here. Hmm. それではいかようにしたものかシャノンのような素敵な使用人も悪くはないでも魔女の楽しさを知ってしまったらもうそれは退屈な憧れもう戻れないシャノンはどうするのかシャノンはシャノンでこれからも尊敬される使用人でいてくれればいい彼女は彼女のままでただこれからは私と二人ではなく彼女だけになるけれどうん別れは唐突にまあよい気まぐれな方が人生は退屈せぬというものをさればどうする魔女がやりたいベアトがやりたいしかしわらわがすでにベアトリーチェであるぞあなたが魔女で私の友人という設定はそのままでベアとは私ということに世界を変更する、うん、つまりわらわはベアトリーチェの友人の魔女そんな感じだからあなたは今からベアトリーチェじゃない魔女 OK わかったではわらわの新しい名前は何とするうん。We shall name you after the, your clothing style. Having a gigantic gap. Hmm, cop sounds good. ふさわしい名前が思いつくまで保留にする。Really? しばらくはなしで。ごめんね。よいよい。せっかくの名前だ。熟考してもらわねば困るというもの。<笑>あなたはベアトリーチェが幼くまだ魔法が使えない頃からの友人私のものを隠したりしてからかっていたことが縁の始まりなるほどそれがやがて魔法に目覚めたベアトリーチェの対等な友人となるわけかではわらわは少しお姉さん的な立場の友人であるな<笑>うんそんな感じ喋り方どうしようかなベアトリーチェの一人称はわらわですっかり馴染んでしまったなそなたに譲るかうんわらわという言葉遣いは私が引き継ぐわらわうんわかったぞではわらわもいやいやこれからはわらわではないな私もベアトリーチェの姉的立場である魔女の友人にふさわしい喋り方を探しておくことにするうんいやうむ<笑>なかなかの貫禄<笑>私のいやわらわの容姿はどうしたものかそうだな私は真っ赤な魔女という感じであるからな赤以外の雰囲気でまとめてみてはどうかうん
When Beatrice wanders the mansion at night, she's often seen dressed in white. Yahari Bore to Yeba Shiroga Imejika Shiroi Doresuno Majo Imejo Matometemir. I need a different look than the witch in the demon red dress. A white, noble witch. Unlike the time with the red witch, I'm thinking about my own look now. So I'd like to make it beautiful and cute if I can. A white dress. A noble look. Like one of the of noble blood, but with a dark, sarcastic streak. No, she's like a tomboy princess, so her voice is a mix of formality and rudeness. And then the dress should, ne should be the exact opposite to make a nice contrast. Ah! Looks like it. Indeed. I saw that smirk. I saw it.気に入った。実に気に入ったぞ、この姿。その調子で今度は私に素敵な名前をつけてくれると嬉しいわね。いつまでも七子じゃん。ふてくされちゃうわ。安心せよ。必ず立派な名前を考えてやろうぞ。それ
黄金の魔女六軒島の夜の支配者なれば夜の屋敷はわらわのものわらわの住まうべきは屋敷ではないかベアトリーチェの部屋ははは決まってるじゃないかええそうねお屋敷の2階のあの素敵な部屋 VIP room? 魔女の貴賓室こそベアトリーチェの部屋じゃないか<笑>おおそうであったな今宵よりわらわが住まうは夜の屋敷のあの部屋ではないかこれはうっかりしていた It's so strange seeing that face on that body じゃあ行きましょうベア魔女が二人お茶をするならあんな狭い部屋じゃなくてふさわしい素敵な部屋でするべきだなそうであるな友人を招いて茶を振る舞うにはあの部屋は粗末がすぎる部屋を変えよう有効ではないか我がチャヌンとはお別れね When I looked at my feet, I could see my own dorm room far beneath me. I could see Shannon, who had dashed up to the bed I lay on and had been saying, Wait at the time, moment time froze. She was as rigid as a doll. Looking down at it from this height, it really did look like a small dollhouse. Saraba da Shannon, Mingen to Ste, Sonata o Mokhioni, Sonata to Yujo Hangukumi Nagara no Hibimo, Tanoshi Mono de Atazo. Ah, this must be the moment where she discarded. I guess temporarily, the personality of Shannon. I was your only close friend too, wasn't I? Please forgive me for erasing that friend so suddenly. As a parting gift, I will erase me from your world. Starting now, this will not be a two person room. It will be a single person room with just you in it. I hope you can continue to strive for your ideal and try to become a kind, reliable servant loved by everyone. Ah. Yasu, the stupid, clumsy servant who lost things all the time, doesn't exist anymore. Oh. So long, Shannon. When I mature as the witch Beatrice and stride through the nighttime mansion where I will, I may bump into you as you do your nighttime rounds. However, when I meet you again, it will not be a reunion. It will be our first meeting. After all, though you have heard the rumors about the witch Beatrice, you have never met her. So long, Shannon. Let us meet again sometime and spin up some fun tale. Well, well, What was I doing? Was I talking in my sleep? Apparently, I had gone out of bed, stretched my hand out towards it, and said, Wait. This isn't the first time I've woken up to find myself saying something strange, but. I don't remember ever waking up to find myself out of bed and standing up. Could this be what they call sleepwalking? Am I just tired? Gotta sleep. Gotta get back to sleep. I turned around to face my bed. Hmm? My bed wasn't there. There was no bed in this room except the one I had just turned my back on. If I'm the only one in this room and the only bed is the one behind me, that must mean it's my bed. That feels wrong for some reason. The bed sheets are all disarranged as though someone had slipped out of them. Who did. This is a single person room with me in it, right? So that there is my bed and the traces of someone crawling out means that I was just sleeping there until a second ago. But for some reason, that bed doesn't feel like my bed. However, though all the other kids shared rooms, I, Shannon, was given a single person room. So there's only one bed, and it must be mine. I must just be half asleep. School starts early tomorrow morning, and when school ends, I want to go to the mansion, help out with some work. And talk to Kumasawa san about the mystery novel I just read. Neyo, Kito, Tsukareteru, Kara, Okashina Koto, Kangai Chan, no, ne? 
おやすみなさいシャノ布団に包まれて静かに目を閉じればもう何も難しいことは考えなくていいんだよ I went back into my bed. It felt a bit uncomfortable to crawl into a bed that wasn't mine. Still, it might just be because I'm getting so sleepy, but it's starting to feel as though this is my bed after all. I'm just half asleep. I'm just Oh. oh! Startled the shit out of me! Ah! There we go! Oh, Sioni Goko Akita! Mingen Goko Akita! Koreori Wadewa! Koyo Yori Wadewa! Beatrice! ああ、<笑> I'm not the only one getting chills from this theme, am I? それはまるで波動のように。やれやれ。今夜も人間の書物を魚に神秘の月を飲み干そう。これがミステリー。これがミステリー。これが人間には不可能な犯罪となる。笑わせる。その程度の好きだらけのあなただけが人間には不可能な
In response to a magician's demand, she gives the power of instant movement. This is one thing he's a badger. Now, I'm not seeing anything different about here. Hmm. Oh well. <sighs> Hope you guys enjoyed this because I certainly did having an extra long episode. Oh my god, this is gonna take me longer. To <laughs> this is gonna take me longer to edit, but that's okay. <sighs> so, gonna go ahead and say this right now. I'm somewhat, I'm somewhat confused, but I think I'm starting to grasp the concept of this finally. I sounded real. I worded that incredibly weird. Ignore, kind of ignore what I just said, but I'm starting to, I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to understand it more. <sighs> I feel like I now, I, I obviously, I think I now understand the true ne essence of what magic it basically is. I think. Also, I'm pretty convinced I figured out how Gop's magic actually worked in that one scene. I think, I think that's how the situation played out in my mind. I think that's how, like, how that worked. But anyway, if you guys like this, definitely be sure to let me know. Anyway. <sighs> you know what? I was craving some movie Neko, so I thought, you know what, why not? We could just do an extra long episode. And I'm certainly glad I did. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.